Um, greetings, everyone. So this part will be me introducing more with not only about what's been mostly covered by the previous two panelists mentioned about the new QV and RQV policy, but also I would like to bring up with the business model of us now in regarding to the international futures contract. Um, I'm Alex, currently working for International Department of Nanhua Futures in China. All right, so this is just a uh, brief table of content of uh, what I will be covering today. So we got background of QV and RQV, revisions of, of QV and RQV, and also some introduction about the international products. So that's why I would like to combine these two um, sectors together as my topic today. So, okay, before we kickstart, let's have this uh, brief overlook with the uh, general background of the internationalization of Chinese futures market for the recent years, and also with what we've been always talking to our friends and clients saying like, hey, look, the Chinese market is uh, finally opening up, right? Um, so in the recent years, the CSRC have been pursuing high level opening up of China's capital markets by implementing the decisions and plans of the um, Central Committee and the State Council. Back in around early um, 2018, it was announced that the foreign ownership limits in foreign invested security companies, fund management firms, and futurist companies be relaxed to, right here I put 51%, and be fully removed in three years and you know counting from 2018 and should be so three years should be 2021 so which should be next year we're doing so the relaxation of such foreign ownership limits have been faithfully carried out with administrative approvals granted to, to four joint venture security companies and the fund management firms were foreign investor takes the majority ownership. Since then, actually a lot of foreign institutions demonstrated greater commitments to increase their investments into China and contributing to the development of Chinese capital market. So this kind of positive effect of the opening up policies and encouraging market feedback have created favorable conditions to accelerate the pace of opening up securities fund management and also for sure the futures sectors that we've been mostly talking about today. So, uh, although I believe you've got enough insights from those uh, professional speakers before me, but in case you're still be wondering, so about the policy, what's new then? Let's see. So basically, everything we're talking about right now with the new policy of QFR QV is based on the guideline that rolled out a couple months ago by CSRC. And the details are mostly about, we can see right here. So um, relaxation qualification requirements, and facilitating investments on the operations of QFIs and RQVs. The previous separate regimes for QFI and RQV, they are now integrated. And also, qualification requirements are relaxed, application documents are streamlined, review cycle is cut short, and also a simplified reviewing, reviewing procedure is applied. So, uh, and also the restriction on the number of intermediaries servicing a QF and RQV investor is now removed formally. And finally, the supervision over reporting and filing RQV and QVs is improved and the requirements of data submissions are reduced. That's what's um, mostly um, talked about by CSRC in its um, rules and press release about the new QFI and RQV rules. And what, um, so if what I've mentioned above just right here, if they sounds like, hmm, good to know, then I guess you might be looking for this one right here. 
So that's the expansion of the investment range, right? Um, according to CSRC, QFIS and QFIS, QFIS and RQFIS may invest in additional asset types in the Chinese domestic markets, including securities admitted on the National Equity Exchange and Quotations. That's called the NEEQ, N-E-E-Q, the NEEQ market. It is a um, state-owned national securities trading exchange established by the um, State Council back in 2012 led by CSRC since then. So other than that, we can see private investment funds and financial futures and commodity futures contract, not only um, for those um, international ones we'll be um, talking about in the short. And also options, for sure, options right here. And, um, and also the QFIS and RQFIS may participate in bond repurchase transactions, margin trading, and security, securities financing on stock exchanges, and securities lending to securities finance companies. So, and also, uh, maybe I didn't put it right here. So, and also financial products, including financial derivative contracts, as well as related trading models, will be gradually relaxed for QFI and RQFI's access in an orderly manner. So uh, we're looking at a like a very long-term opening up step-by-step -step, uh, release by CSRC for all those um, investment targets we mentioned right here, step-by-step. -step. So um, like all the foreign investors uh, should be waiting on this uh, real quick. So yeah, basically, um, we can see that's um, almost the whole pool of, of investments will get greenlighted in a very short soon. Okay, so moving to the next topic. So do you remember my um, main topic at the very first page? So that's the QV and RQV with um, international futures contract, right? So which leads to this question right here um, in the middle. So what would be the actual relationship between these two? Do they um, work together or do they fight with each other actually? So by answering that, we'll have to look at this page first. All right, um, so starting in um, 2018 right here, that's where the government started talking, uh, talking more and more about internationalization everything back then is at the very beginning stage then shanghai international energy exchange which is the ine finally listed its crude oil contract on march 26 which back then like everyone in downtown chicago was expecting this very first shot from chinese futures market for years i believe and this ine crude oil is um, still till the very now it's still like the um, top con top option for arbitrage traders who would trade wti crude oil against INA crude oil um, yeah it is till today it's a very um, good arbitrage choice and then we have um, dollar commodity exchange the dce launched this international iron ore contract in May, and also the ZCE, the Zhenzhou Commodity Exchange, launched its PTA, which is um, also a um, downstream product of the um, crude oil. So um, by the PTA contract was listed by the ZCE exchange on November, um, late 2018. And then we goes to um, mid, 2019 and earlier 2020, we can see the INE was finally back in the game with its rubber 20 and the low surfer fuel oil, the LSFO contract, list on the INE exchange. And yes, um, following this, we will see till the uh, like the very uh, last the last week, uh, no on November the 19th, we got Shanghai Futures Exchange list their uh, international bonded copper 
as uh, its first um, internationalized contract. And it is also, to be noted, it is also the very first one coexisting with the domestic Chinese copper contract comparing with the other five contracts. So um, at the very uh, right bottom to this page, we can still see continues that even more in this year, DCE, the dollar commodity exchange, catches up with their pace with deciding to launch international palm oil and oil contract on um, December the 22nd, 2020. And um, just to give you guys a heads up with this, we um, Network Futures will be co-hosting another webinar with DCE about this palm oil and oil contract somewhere in mid-December. For sure, it should be um, right before um, the contract got finally listed, right? So uh, we'll be inviting some Hasha palm oil professionals. If you should be interested in this, um, please, please stay tuned to um, our website. Um, so, uh, while since I've mentioned ourselves, let's take a look at the um, International Business Overlook map right here. So, what you're actually seeing right now um, is not only the um, like what role Nanhua actually plays as, but also is the trade solution we usually provide to our foreign investors, which is you should see right here to the very um, right off the page and um, for this um, very top of the page flow you can see um, this is what we usually meant by saying internationalized futures trading path which only requires the foreign investors to open the NRA account then you could go directly to a domestic futures company like us um, here in China, the uh, Nanhua Futures Company Limited, uh, to you know, to open up your futures trading account for to trade all those six internationalized futures contract, and without going through another layer of foreign intermediary corporation. So, um, and also you can see at the very bottom right here, that's the. Uh, main topic we should be covering for today. That's the um, QF and RQF way. And it goes through one, you can see right here, it goes through one qualified QF or RQF entities, which usually could be a um, asset management company with its qualification granted by CSRC. For example, like um, one of our fully owned subs Hong Kong subsidiary called HGNH International Asset Management Company. Um, this kind of asset management um, company can be the qualified QFI and RQFI entities before the trade goes to the domestic Chinese futures companies, then goes to the, um, the accordingly exchange based on what's the uh, target investment you're looking at. Well, so there are also like outside of this map, there are also uh, plenty of solutions we can provide to our online clients or potential clients actually. So for example, about like OTC and uh, PE fund through our Chinese affiliate firm, but those are actually another story. If you should be interested in, um, you, can, you can always contact us for more details about those plans. And uh, yes, so this is um, just a brief background of our company right here. So um, I'll have to mention again that our um, international department here in China of Nanhua Futures is devoted to bringing um, foreign investors into um, Chinese futures or like capital market actually with providing the best suitable and customized solutions uh, based on the client's need and targets. And um, yeah, so just after this uh, uh, brief outlook about us, so um, to the very last and outstanding question is, 
um, what's the actual relationship between QFI and RQFI and internationalized contracts? Well, I would say like both of both of them have their pros and cons, which you should be uh, probably getting a better idea even than I do after this webinar. So, uh, but you know, like you might be thinking like, which one to choose? Um, is the about to open new QFI with full product range, or you can start now with trading internationalized contract while waiting on the details from CSRC to roll out again? Well, it's your call, actually. Okay, thank you for your time attending this webinar today. For any further questions, please reach out to us via the phone call in the uh, right here or simply write an email to me directly. I'm Alex.